Hey there, welcome back to my channel. It's good to see you. I'm glad you're back. If you are brand new here, welcome to my channel. If you've been tuned in for a while, I'm glad to see you. So what we do around here is we do DIY projects. We do DIY decor mainly. I love to make my own stuff. I love to throw out my ideas, with all the little things that I go pick up, and I think this video you're gonna love. So everything that's in this video is gonna be timestamped down below in the description so you'll be able to find your place where you wanna go. And I hope that you thoroughly enjoy these projects that we're gonna make today. I know I love them, I love all the things, but I hope you do too. And I hope you subscribe to my channel, ding the bell, give me a thumbs up, give me a comment, say a quick hello, I would love to hear from you. So without further ado, let's get started. Hey guys, we're gonna start with project number one. I think you're gonna like this one. So we're using our floating shelf from the Dollar Tree, these wood planks, a baby wipe, black paint, our continuous spray bottle, and a few other materials I will explain as we go. So start by spraying your boards, just to get them a little bit wet to accept the paint. And you're gonna take your wipe and you're gonna start staining with the paint. So diluting the paint with water really helps. And you're gonna do all three of these boards. Now these boards, they come in a six pack. We did use these on our, I think it's a shower caddy that we did, that we made into a shelf. I'll have to link that video in the description, but these were the ones that were left over from that project. And then once you're done with the paint, go over it with a clean baby wipe and just wipe off the excess. And they are gonna look super charcoal. Now dry them with a hair dryer or a heat gun, completely dry. And we're going to use these popsicle sticks con to connect all three of our boards. Now I do use Gorilla Glue with my Sherbonder glue gun. And I do believe these are linked also in the description. So check that area out as well. And then once you're done with that, we're gonna open up our Dollar Tree little mini floating shelf and we're gonna see a dry fit. Now I had not made this before, so I do make things pretty much as I go. So I just wanted to double check the placement. We are gonna use our regular white apple barrel paint and I just use some wax paper to put my paint on. Sometimes I'll use a paper plate. But we're gonna just dry brush over that charcoal color for our wood and just kind of make it look whitewashed. Now we're gonna use these wood squares from the Dollar Tree and we're just gonna glue these on to the bottom of our shelf to make the feet. Cause you'll be able to stand this up and I think it turned out so cute, but you could also still hang it. I show you kind of that at the end. Now we're gonna use our drill uh, and a drill bit and we're gonna use these cup hooks and you're gonna drill through your board. Be gentle with this because you don't wanna split anything. And then just put on your cup hooks. And I think I got my cup hooks at Walmart, but um, if you have other cup hooks, I don't know if they have them at the Dollar Tree. I have never looked there to see if they have cup hooks. I think you might be able to get them. Does anyone know? Let me know if you could get those at the Dollar Tree. But I did use mine from Walmart. And then we just added some hooks. And we're gonna use our Crafter Square dowel rods. And we're gonna create a rod and we're gonna put beads on the end of it. And I just took a pencil and I just marked it and I used these aviation snips that I got at Lowe's. And you're gonna be able to cut your dowel rod down or your craft stick or whatever you wanna call it. And then I just use another pair of scissors just to trim off the edge. Don't use your good scissors though. And so we're gonna take this laundry bag and I had used this for another project that I thought turned out really cute. And I will also link that one as well in the description. And so we're gonna start by cutting off this one section and you're gonna cut up the center of that section just to create like a division, but you're not gonna cut it all the way through. And then cut up both of your sides so that you have like a fold over. You'll see here in a second, it, it'll like fold open. And then we're gonna glue down a section about an inch across and you're gonna glue all the way across. You're gonna fold that over and then use your wax paper to press it down. And the reason I did this is because I wanted to create like a seam so we can put our dowel rod through it. We're creating a curtain, you guys. It's gonna be so cute. So my wax paper did stick, but it was okay. Just pull it apart. You could use silicone if you want to, the like silicone mats, but you can see where it kind of looks like a stitch. So that's gonna create our hold for our rod to go through. So the next thing you're gonna do is take your 
dowel rod that you cut and mine was a little bit rough on the end so I just put a little bit of glue there and I just pushed it completely through the two panels like you would a regular curtain and go all the way through to the very end try to be gentle so that you don't snag the strings because it is a mesh laundry bag and then squish it to the center and then you just don't want to get any glue on this so squish it to the center and then we're going to take these larger beads and we're going to create our end caps for our curtain rod and I just used the glue and glued the rod and I just picked a bead that fit the diameter of the craft stick or the dowel from the Dollar Tree and then you're going to glue both of those on and it fits right over onto the little hooks with no problems and then what you're going to do next is you're going to kind of cinch your panels to the side and I am using the mop strings to create our tie backs I just thought this is so kind of farmhouse with a little boho and tie it did not tie a knot and then I just crossed over and glued so it kind of looks like it's hanging down and I didn't glue these panels to the backboard yet I just wanted to check my placement first but kind of make it look like a curtain and then tie the other side over and do the exact same thing now, if you guys enjoy my channel, there are plenty more videos for, here for you to check out. Please look around, and I hope that you choose to subscribe and turn on the bell. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you think of this project so far. Um, in fact, I just want to know what you think about the projects in general. I want to know if you like the style and you love what we do around here, at least what I do. I love to inspire people. I do talk a lot. I love to explain. That's one thing I love to do is give step by step. And I just feel like if I was going to do something, how I would want to know all the extra little details. So we did finally glue our little curtain panels with our laundry bag down. And now it looks like a little window. It doesn't have like a glass area, but it is like a window. And you're going to place a lot of glue down and you're going to glue your shelf to the front of this. Now it's going to want to rock a little bit, so make sure you hold it tight. And then once your glue bonds, you'll see right there that it is really tight and we don't have any issues. So how cute is this, y'all? You can make this if you did snag those the floating shelf. We added the feet, did a little number. I hope you love this. If you do, give me a thumbs up, give me a comment, let me know if you're going to be making this as well. And I just showed you a way you could stage it, but you can still hang it or you can set it on um, like a mantle or something like that or a shelf. But here we are with our project and we're going to go right in to the next one. All right, this is project number two. I love this one. Okay, so I picked up these octagon boxes at Dollar Tree and I knew I wanted to do something with them and we're gonna use the bottoms for a different project, but for this project, we're using just the tops. So you buy the two and they're one size and you get the smaller one and it has two together. So you get like a two pack. So you have four lids here and we're going to take our craft paint and I just put it on a paper plate and we're going to give the outside and the inner of these lids kind of a distressed look. So it could be farmhouse, boho. It, it's totally up to you. You can paint it whatever color you like. I am going with the white and the gray and the black. And then once I got the first coat of paint on, I did let it dry thoroughly and I did all of them. So it's a lot of repetitiveness. So I did kind of speed through a lot of this, but I'm showing you the basics of what I did. So you're going to do the inside, the outside with the white. And then on the next ones, you're going to do the same thing. All four of them are going to get the same uh, methods. And then once you are dry with that, because you don't want your paints to mix, you want to dry brush on I did alternating. So I did two with the gray and two with the black and I just dry brushed. And then I overlaid that with, I think another coat of white paint just to kind of tone it down. Cause I felt like it was a little bit bold. So I am just using this pewter gray from Apple Barrel. You can get it at Walmart. Um, but I will link all the supplies that I use for all of my videos in the description. There may not be links to everything because most of the stuff you can find like in local stores. But if there is a special link, I will always give it to you. 
but I am using mostly Dollar Tree products with a mix of maybe a couple other things. But I am just dry brushing and I will tell you, those metal handled Dollar Tree brushes, the bristles fall out really bad. <laughs> They're great for just, you know, a quick project, but definitely not worth saving for sure. So you can see where I did two with the gray and then two with the black. And I just wanted a mixture of colors. And then once those dry, like I said, you're going to go over them with the white and just kind of tone it down a little bit. And make sure that you do your insides if you want to. If you don't want to do them, you can leave them solid white. I decided I wanted to do the insides of mine. So I did alternate again. So as you can see, that's the black on the outside um, dry brushed. And then I did the gray on the inside. And then I did the same thing here. The gray on the outside, the black on the inside. It just gave it a little bit of different, you know, contrast and dimension. And all of those are going to need to be dried completely. And then you're going to just do a light, like just rough kind of, you see, just very dusty with the white over it just so it has that distressed look, but it's not quite as bold as it was. All right, so I picked up these two rugs, I guess they're like bath mats or whatever, at Dollar Tree a few months ago. In fact, I've made a pillow with one of them. Turned out really cute. I don't think I have a video for that. Maybe I'll have to find it and, get, and share it with you guys, but it turned out really cute. It was very boho. And we're just tracing this, these lids in different pattern, like sizes. So we're doing two with this rug. And then this is a black and white one. And then the other rug, I believe, is the gray and white one. And I just used a magic marker and I'm using some scissors to just cut out the panels that we're going to set and glue inside of our boxes. Y'all, this is a very simple, easy way to create some wall decor, especially if you're doing like a gallery wall. It's a very easy thing that you can do just to look at a lid and fabric. <laughs> you could do scrap paper as well if you wanted to. You could stamp it. You could um, do a stencil. Um, there's a lot of different things that you can do, but actually I think I got it wrong. So the first rug was the gray and white. This one is the black and white. And we're gonna do repeat that step again. Now, I will give you a tip um, as we go through this step here. When I was cutting these down, um, I traced around the outside of the box, but I didn't really account for the diameter of or the frame of the box. So I did have to do a little extra over trimming. You can kind of see where I cut inside the line and it allowed my, my octagons to fit um, perfectly inside my box lids. And you can see it fit perfect. So just make sure you trim around as you need to. And then we have these different variations. Now I am gluing these in. You could use Mod Podge if you want to. And the next thing I decided to do was trim out the inners because I, I wanted this to have very much of a boho, but sort of farmhouse feel. This is very much my own style. You could totally use whatever like preference you have if you love the shape, but you don't like this pattern. You can, um, pick your own fabric if you wanted to. I think this would be really cool with blue jeans. It's like some old denim jeans or um, a patterned napkin or something like that. There's so many things you can decoupage with. But I ended up going with this rug because I actually made some other things, like I said, for my bedroom with this pattern. And these are gonna be going in my bedroom. So I just wanted to share that with you guys so you would know what to expect. And I love the mop strings. I love the Jenga blocks. I, I love all the things Dollar Tree. <laughs> I have an overabundance of Dollar Tree stuff in my, my creative shed. I don't know if you guys have like an enormous craft stash, but this girl has a ton of stuff. But if you love crafty things and DIY decor stuff that's affordable and cute and on trend, um, please consider subscribing to my channel introducing yourself in the comments. I would love to meet you 
I do have a Facebook page where I do live videos um, at least three to four times a week and we to we do totally different projects over on Facebook than what's on YouTube and I always tell my Facebook friends the same thing like go check out the YouTube there's different stuff over there so there is a link to my social medias in the description I would love for you to come find me on Facebook and connect with me on Instagram and I love inspiring people through creativity and DIY and I also have a blog where you can find a lot of free printables, some other projects that we've done. Um, I know I just thought, you know, it's a lot of repetitive stuff here. I should probably, you know, have a little conversation with you guys and let you know more about me. But I love decor and DIYs. <laughs> I love making stuff on a budget too. So now that everything's completed and we've glued in our mop strings, I am going through my bucket of succulents <laughs> it's like a variety of different ones and some of these came with pots some of them came in clips and I just dismantled them and I like to go through and pick through the ones that I want to use and I like to I like to use succulents especially for things that are like modern farmhouse with a boho feel I just think they're really pretty Now I thought I was going to use that colorful one, but I decided to go against it. So I just went ahead and decided let's just stay with the same color palette. But you can choose if you want to put flowers or succulents on yours, but this girl decided to go with the succulents. I just feel like it just goes with the style that I have. So be sure to use your glue fingers for this. Um, don't burn yourself. Uh, you'll need to figure out the placement of these depending on which ones you use and use a generous amount of glue when you're putting these on so that they don't kind of fall forward or anything like that. All right, so I was gonna initially glue these together, but I thought against it, so I decided I was gonna cut some twine and I just did even lengths and we're gonna glue these onto the back of our little box lids and we're just gonna hang them and even though the boxes are different sizes I went with the exact same size uh, twine I just thought that it was you know just a cute way to hang it I don't know that it really makes a difference but I did use my glue fingers to push the glue and the twine together but look at how cute those are how adorable are those y'all I just thought this is just really it's just a fun way to create some decor that looks high-end but is totally affordable i hope you've enjoyed this one let me know what you think in the comments and be sure to subscribe turn on that bell and i will see you on the next project Okay, I have a funny story with this one. <laughs> so I use this board. I'll tell you the story as we go through because it's a lot of repetitiveness, but you'll get the idea. So I used the large nautical rope and the that's the whiter color, the lighter colored, and I used the brown nautical rope and then mop strings um, that are the gray and the white and then the regular white. So you can basically get the concept of what's going on here, but I just wanted to show this to you guys and share this project with you. If you love boho, I feel like it also kind of maybe has like, it's like not like seventies or eighties feel. It's just got a really cool feel. And if you want to create some larger textured wall decor, this one could be up for consideration, I think. Uh, and you could also use fabrics if you wanted to, or yarn, you could do this in, with multiple things. Anyways, so I, um, I record all my videos overhead and I was recording this project and did not realize my computer crashed on me. So I had to, I got halfway through this. This is actually the second one you're watching. So I made two of these and I got halfway through and I realized my computer completely just, the battery died. I lost I lost it so I had to start another one and then I figured you know what in the end it worked out pretty well because I made two of the same ones and I thought they would be so cute if you just needed simple decor to do two of these because you'll have enough materials to do two 
So basically you're gonna do a pattern. So we're doing the larger nautical rope or it's called decorative nautical rope, I think. I don't know for sure. And then we're using the gray and white mop head to do two rows. And then we're going to do the brown rope to do the next loop around. And we're gonna do one and two, one, two, one, and then so on. So you'll see as we go, it's one large, two gray, and then it's gonna be two or one brown. So the the not the regular most everyone can get a hold of that nautical rope but it's that brown rope there so you're gonna do one wrap around of that and then we're going to do our white mop strings and we're gonna do two rows of that and that will complete our sequence like our pattern or sequence you get the you get the idea you'll see here as we go it's just you're basically just repeating the whole thing all the way to the center and so you're not going to end on the larger, you're going to end on the gray. And then I just took the mop strings and they aren't a continuous. So you'll need to cut and try to find where you can just go corner, corner, and then start a new string and do corner, corner. So it's, it's going to be two for each piece. Yeah. So you can see here that it doesn't quite go across. So just cut that off and start a new row. And you're going to do two of those. And then once you get to the center, you'll see that there's no real way to get this exactly straight. It's going to look a little bit off maybe. If you have a better way of attaching these, you know, do whatever you need to do to make it straight lines. I couldn't do it and I made two attempts at this. So it's just going to be very abstract, I guess, but I think it's really cool. So all I do is cut off that tape and then glue it with the glue fingers, the finger protectors, and then cut the, where the dry glue is and to start the next row. So that is your pattern. So rope, gray and white mop string, brown rope, white mop strings, and then rope again. And then you're going to start that whole thing over. So I love Boho Farmhouse. It's something that I personally um, am doing in my home. I don't know if this fits your style. So like I said, if there's something else you want to use instead, you could do this as well. But everything here came from the Dollar Tree. And so it was pretty stinking affordable. I think I used one one package of the decorative rope, one, one obviously mop. So one, two, th so for $4 and your board, $5, you could do one of these. And so you can see how it's starting to look here. And this is where my uh, computer died. I had to start completely over. <laughs> I had to start over. So I had to finish and then start a new one and then pick up where I left off and remember where I was. And as you can see, you're just basically completing those same. It's just very repetitive. But I wanted to show you guys how I thought it was just cute. I want to know what you think. Let me know if you like just, you know, patterns like this. Uh, for wall decor and this is where I wanted you to note. do you see how the the box is off square it's gonna happen it's gonna happen but I think it was really cute y'all I just thought this is really turning out really adorable and if you wanted to leave this open you could put a picture in there you could stop at the brown rope like if you do just two of the brown ropes and then stop right there you could actually put a picture in that there you could do a monogram overlay over this you could overlay a whole different design over this if you wanted to totally up to you I think this would make really cool um accents like on a mantle you can hang it on a wall uh there's so many different ways you can use different things like this but y'all if you love my channel and you love these DIYs please check out my other videos I have several playlists here and we do, uh, I try to bring you guys a video a week right now. I'm really trying to work on getting two videos a week, but I am still new to YouTube and I also do Facebook lives. <laughs> so I, I do a lot of videos a lot. So if you want to check me out on Facebook, um, you can find the information in the description of this video. Um, and then just let me know what you think. Subscribe, turn on the bell, share this video with somebody. I love this. We're going to add a hanger to it because we got to do some, some, some more boho looks to this. So I decided why not do a wood bead hanger. 
So I made it a lot larger because I felt like this is a larger surface piece. And I'm using my beads from Amazon and I'm using the cup from the Dollar Tree. Of course, I've spray painted in it, but it, I, I, I like to reuse my containers. And I'm using a darning needle that I got from Hobby Lobby. Um, I've lost my other one. I don't even know what happened to it. Does anyone else lose craft supplies but me? I lose craft supplies all the time. But I use a darning needle because it um, allows me to thread this thicker twine to add my beads to. It's just a little bit easier. You could use, um, some people glue their twine to a skewer and do it that way, but I just use the, the dowel, the darning needle. And then I like to glue the ends for my beads so that they don't go anywhere. And then I attach it to the back. Now I do use craft paper and I just am like, whatever's on hand, just start cutting it. <laughs> so I knew this is going to be heavy and I knew I would need to do like my glue tape method with the band-aid paper trick so I just cut the craft paper and did that and then you're gonna do that on both sides add a generous amount of glue because we don't want it to come apart and this is it you guys I think it turned out great I hope you like this I had to make two of them <laughs> but I think it was okay but thank you for watching Thank you for being here. Turn on that bell, subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.